there are five major changes coming to our favorite singing members of Dungeons and Dragons parties. For the first change they're making to bards is how bardic inspiration works, scales, and refreshes. Uh, it starts off by they changed it to bardic inspiration is boosting a d20 test when another creature within 60 feet of you that you can see or here fails a d20 test like a saving throw, an ability check, an attack roll. Uh, you can use your reaction to give this creature a part against inspiration die, like a d6 at level 1. The, But you can use your reaction to do it when they uh, when they see that they fail um, the d20 roll, which is a change from just giving them out as bonus act actions and they last for 10 minutes um, and then they can use them on a d20 test there. Um, also, you can immediately after another creature within 60 feet of you that you can see or hear takes damage, you can use your reaction to roll your bard inspiration die and restore a number of hit points to the creature equal to the number rolled. So it's like a, a small like reactionary heal as well. When someone goes down, you'd be like, no, get up and Get it. So that's different than the bonus actions in 5th edition. Um, I love the new functionality, turning it from a bonus action into re a reaction, and now allowing it to heal people a little bit. So I love this change. Um, what I don't love is the number of uses went from scaling with your charisma bonus in 5th edition to now scaling with proficiency bonus uh, per long rest or for short rest when you get uh, Font of Inspiration. Um, I don't like it not scaling with Proficiency Bonus because it take this, what is because it's taking away, uh, taking away player agency in character creation and uh, by switching the scaling to Proficiency Bonus. Let's say, you wanted your bard to be super inspiring using fifth edition rules. You can make sure to always have your your charisma score be as high as possible, leading to the more uh, level four leading. Like with, you get an eighteen charisma, you'd have four uses per short rest, and now you're gated by your level, which you're not in control of. Your dungeon master is, so you're gated to like two from levels two bardic inspirations per long rest from levels one to four and then three to level five to eight, etc. based on uh, so you get a lot less bardic inspirations. Um, and if this wants to be their main thing that bards do, we should be giving them more of this and not less. And it's not even that powerful of an ability. It's strong, but it's not only give them a same number, like only give them two per day until level seven strong, or two or three per day to level seven. Like it's not that strong. Um, so also, and also a good, but a good thing about moving the scaling from charisma bonus to proficiency bonus is now dipping one level into bard to get barding inspiration and just having a minimum charisma score of 13 uh, allows you to at higher levels like get the same amount of bardic inspiration uses for long rest if you're looking to like just dip one level into bard um, so that's a so we're, uh, that's where proficiency scaling is like leads to more character variation. Um, also, Wizards of the Coast moves font of bardic inspiration feature from level five uh, to level seven, meaning you now even have to be more frugal with your bardic inspirations, which is kind of why you're playing a bard um, for until level seven, which is a long, long time because most people don't even 
lots of people play from like level one to five, and then people play from like level five to ten. Um, level seven is I just want it's too long um, for a bard to be using their main subclass abilities of bard against duration stuff. It should always re it should always refresh on short rests. So what I would do to maintain player agency is I would keep the charisma scaling the same as fifth edition, um, but I would just add the new ways of using uh, bard against duration. So like right here, the boost to d twenty and the heal. Um, I would I would just add this to the fifth edition ways of using. Bardic Inspiration, and I was make I would also make Font of Bardic Inspiration not there. I just I would just make Bardic Inspiration for refreshing short rests. Um, so that makes the most sense, and it's kind of why you're playing a bard. So you want to be able to inspire people as much as possible and as often as possible, starting from level one. Um, that just leads to super fun mechanical play from bards. All right, but if we get rid of Font of Inspiration at level seven, we can move uh, the new, we can move expertise from level, so, so bards are experts in 1 and d So they get expertise at second level, and then they get also get more two more expertise points at ninth level. I would just move expertise down to seventh level, uh, th so they can scale the same as rogues do uh, with expertise. And I'll just remove font of bardic inspiration and just give it to the bards automatically. Um, yeah, I also love this, the bonus action bardic inspiration that lasts 10 minutes because it leads to some really fun dramatic moments. Uh, you can. If you ever watch Sam Regal of Critical Role play a bard, you know when he gives out bardic inspirations, it's it's role playing gold. I just I just love it. Uh, the next change is the way bards prepare spells is changing. Uh, Wizards of the Coast is moving from a number of known spells. Uh, Debar is now getting to prepare spells from the arcane list, but limited to the spell schools of divination, enchantment, illusion, and transmutation. So with this new system, the bars get less spells available each day at level 1 and 2, and then they get slightly more spell options per day from there. Uh, just like number of spells they can like prepare and cast per day. Um, the Spell slots aren't changing. Um, the good thing about this change is bards now have more daily flexibility within their spells, mimicking like clerics and druids' abilities to be Swiss Army Knife spellcasters each day, which is which is a really fun playstyle. But there's a lot of spells to learn, um, and it's the bad is moving from known spells to preparing. Sp Spells every day adds a lot of complexity to the bards that they didn't have uh, when they just had like a list of I know these like five to nine spells I can cast these like you didn't have to wake up each day for a new adventuring day and like look at what spells you want to prepare like you didn't have to do that planning now you should be doing it to play a bard like well um, it's just a lot to do for a new player. Um, I also, I've talked about the Arcane Primal and uh, Divine spell list before, and I just, I like each class having its own spell list, um, but maybe I'm just old fashioned like that. Going along this lines, the next major change, they moved Magical Secrets for, from levels 10 to 11, which would be good, which would be like a buff, an actual buff to this feature if it was still worked 
as it did in 5th edition, but they changed it to uh, the... Oh, they also get these ones, like Song of Restoration instead of Song of Rest, because no one was really using the Song of Rest. It wasn't a very good mechanic, so I like them just giving them these extra spells um, that are like healing oriented, like healing word and lesser restoration, mass healing word. Yeah, these feel good. Um, so they moved Magical Secrets and to level 11 from level 10, and they also changed it. So now you get a pick, an Arcane, Divine, or Primal spell list, and then you can compare, you can prepare spells from this class, and up to two spells can be from any school of magic. So, every single day, you can prepare spells from those four spell schools I listed, and then at level 11, you can pick like a whole, say like you wanted to also cast druid spells. You could pick the primal with your magical secrets and prepare two spells of whatever you wanted from that spell list today as well. Um, so the good thing about this change is you turn into a Swiss army knife every day for like whatever spells you want to prepare and should be able to come up with a list of spells to help in whatever situation you find your character in, which is great. Um, they can just be like a jack of all magical trades, pretty much. The bad is there's a so you get so much choice. So like analysis paralysis is a heck of a thing. Um, this does not help new players play bards. Uh, this makes bards very, very, very complicated. Just as complicated as playing a druid or a cleric, which are the two most complicated like classes to play in fifth edition. Um, also, it takes away kind of from the individuality of your known spell list, and then which magical secrets you pick um, should kind of be tailored to what like what bard you're playing. Like, it's a really powerful feature because you can in 5th edition because you can pick from the Paladin spell list as well. And some, some of the Paladin spells are... Some of the 5th level Paladin spells are really, really, really strong. And the only they get access to them, but Bards can also get access to them with Magical Secrets, which is fantastic. Um, you can get access to like the Warlock ones as well, like the Warlock specific ones and the Rogue... The Ranger specific ones should be like usable but they're pretty bad because rangers is yeah i guess rangers um the last and final like minor change they made to bards was they moved jack of all trades from level two to level five um which is good for a place for putting the true polymath bard feature i think um so they moved it from Jack of all trades, they didn't change it at all mechanically. It just gives you half your proficiency bonus to the skills you're not proficient in. Um, they moved it from level two and just to level to level five. Uh, this change I don't really have. It's fine. So now you can't like dip two levels into bar to get jack of all trades and then stack that on top of um, reliable talent as the rogue, so like a level 13, a level 13 character that did that could, in 5th edition, because Jack of all trades counts as having proficiency in the skill, they could have a reliable talent in all of their <laughs> skills. Um, so they can never like roll below whatever. Um, that's no longer an option. Well, unless you want to go, you'd get that at like level, five bard and level 11 rogue so that's level 16 total so that's pretty much your whole character is just like to get that synergy going which could be fun but it's fine all right that's all i have for bards catch you in the next one like this fix comment to get wizards of the coast to see and implement this change subscribe <laughs>